Hello, I'm Fruxius, developer of Neos VR, and I have a really big update for Neos. So one of the things I've added in the last two builds and that I've been working on for the past, uh, past several weeks is a completely new text rendering system. This one, it serves as a foundational block, block for the UI overhaul. It also like brings many benefits of its own. So let's actually have a look at um, what it does. So let me switch it to, to my point of view, and let's have a look over here. So see, I have a bunch of text here, and essentially this is all being rendered using the new font rendering system. If I look up close, you can see it has uh, this really nice smooth edge. It has uh, pretty sharp corners, but actually like a bitmap data, it's uh, pretty low in memory. So this is essentially replacing the previous system, which uh, it used a similar rendering technique, but uh, this one offers higher visual quality. Uh, and essentially the system completely replaces the Unity system. It supports uh, pretty much everything that the previous system does, so um, right now it essentially has replaced all, almost all text rendering in Neos. There's still like another part that uh, is going to be replaced and it's like within the UI. Um, for example, you can see it supports like tags, so you can have like bold text, you can change color, you can have italics, underline, strike through. And one thing that's new, you can actually change font within the text. And this is an actual text, so if I open, let me just showcase my private UI. If I grab a developer tooltip, I open this up and I click on the editing. Actually, I want to edit this one. So I can start typing. You can see I can actually change change the text. So let's type hello. So this is all fully editable text. Um, there's another thing. So these are essentially different font files. So if you want to import a font, all you have to do is uh, you can find a TTA file or uh, a font collection as well. So for example, here I have a, I have a very, very bad font, <laughs> but you can see essentially it reports fine. Let's try another one. So there's another font. It's essentially pretty much uh, double click on the TTA file and it will import right inside of Neos. And this will act as any as any other asset type, like a texture or mesh or a material. So you can essentially grab it. And let's say I have a bunch of text over here. I have, a, I have like this wall of text and I want to use this font. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select it open up uh, in the inspector. You see there is the text render component. And all I do, watch this, so I'm gonna put it close. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop this font here. Zoop, and you see now it uses this new font. So it's as simple as that. I have another font over here. Let's try this one. Let's drop it over here. Zoop, and you see now it's using this font. There's another important thing to note is that uh, the rendering technique, depending on the font, you might need to increase quality. So I already did it increase for this one. So if I open this up, on this you'll find static font, and you can see the glyph EM size is set to 128. By default it's 32, but uh, for a font like this, where we have a lot of like very thin edges, this is not enough. So if I change this value, if I change it back to 32, you kind of see how you get um, essential order of like the detail gets lost. So for, for fonts like these, like you can essentially increase, oop, I put a little bit too big number there, so now it's probably generating in the background. There we go, 64, yeah, it was 128. And you can see the cool thing is you can essentially see everything update sort of like in real time. The new system is completely asynchronous, so even if it's a lot of work for a phone system, it's gonna is going to generate it pretty quickly. And it's also going to generate like in the background so it doesn't like you while it's, do it's doing its work. So another thing, for example, uh, the font system it supports like uh, you can lay out the text. So you can, this one is centered, this one is left aligned, this one is uh, justified, this is new. Justification wasn't supported before. And it's right aligned. Another thing is because the glyphs, they are being generated on the fly. We now support pretty much um, 
uh, generic NSM enigliv from the font file. So we support things like Japanese, obviously we have Czech, Russian, uh, there's like Korean, there's Chinese, Vietnamese, uh, there are like French symbols here, this is Greek and this is another like a uh, Cyrillic symbol. So now essential languages that uh, before would display uh, display like the square, square uh, essential squares, they will render correctly now. And then over here, we have, uh, here's an example. So the system is now native to NEOS. So it's very, it's very int well integrated with NEOS's own subsystems, like for example, mesh and material rendering. It's also one of the reasons why is it very performant is because it's using NEOS's procedural asset framework, meaning it's automatically multi-threaded, it's automatically asynchronous. So it, uh, it um, that speeds up trainings greatly. And over here, you can see this is the copy of the example text. But over here, what I did, essentially, I changed the material. So this actually shows you what the raw data looks like. So like this is the actual texture. And you can see it's this kind of color mess. But it's actually like the glyph that's produced out of this. And let me actually hide the UI so I don't see it anymore. So what I can do is I can open up this in the inspector. And you see on the text render, there's material list. So pretty much like any tech, like any mesh render, you can actually assign it different materials and it's going to pick them up and it's going to automatically configure them for the font rendering. For the font to be actually displayed properly, if it's using the sign distance field, the multi-channel sign distance field, you actually need to use proper material for that. And you can find that one under materials text. There's going to be also more materials coming in the future, but technically you can use any material. So potentially you'll be able like to bring your own once we have a shader support. So this one is just analog material. I'm going to drop this one here as a material, and you see you now essentially we see the raw data. And you see how is it? How is it essentially producing like this nice smooth visual? out of this like colored, colored mess. It's very cool to watch. And over here it's uh, set up with a wireframe material, so essentially you can, you can see the raw geometry that's generated. It's kind of funny because the text render is, is technically a procedural mesh provider, so like it, you see essentially it produces, it behaves as a, like an, almost any mesh provider in EOS. And one more thing I want to show you, actually just a few more, is uh, the new system is designed to be very performant and you can of course, as anything in NEOS, you can interface with, with, with logics. So for example, this one is using bounded layout, which means like there's a specified width. So if I open this up, you can see there is a bound size. And I can actually change it and like the text it will reflow. So say it's 0.5. But let's let's do something fun and let's actually change it using logics. So I'm gonna grab the interface for this. Open it up. Let's just take a quick uh, sign function. So I'm gonna take my time. I'm gonna take time. I'm gonna take sign function. So this way, like it goes up and down, but I don't want it to be going into negative values. So I'm gonna remap it. Now it's going like from zero to one, and it's pretty good. Now I need to compose 2D vector because the bounds they have width and height. So I'm gonna go to operators, pick x y, plug this here, set y as one for example. It automatically overflow, and now I can simply plug this here. And see, now it's automatically adjusting adjusting the layout. And you see this is all being recomputed essentially on another thread. With the previous system, this would cause frame rate drop because all the computations are being done would be done synchronously. But this essentially uh, this is done completely on a separate thread. So even if it's a very complex chain, if, if it's like a lot of text, it will it will essentially be significantly 
faster and have much less impact on performance. It will really nicely utilize uh, uh, if you have a multi-core system, which in most cases like you do, it will nicely like, utilize your system resources. Um, there's one more thing I want to showcase for the for the performance of the new system. So let's create let's create an empty text, just a basic text. Then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open Logix interface for this. Uh, the important thing, I'm gonna close the inspector right now. And essentially, I want to like test how fast like it looks. It uh, like if I generate if, if I generate a lot of text. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make a web request a website. And let's go to network. Get string. The need write. So I will write the result, which is the raw HTML and JavaScript code. I will write it into the Oh, I grabbed the wrong interface. I need the text render. There we go. I will write it into the text over here. I will write it like when, when this results. And one thing I'm going to do is put Google there. There's no specific reason for Google. It's essentially just um, anything that produces a lot of text. So now I have this, so ready. I'm gonna click the pulse. When I click the pulse, it's gonna make a web request and it's gonna write the raw HTML code and JavaScript into this text and it's gonna display it. So watch carefully, watch carefully. You see like how instant this was? And pretty much uh, caused and all like, and I see like this is an enormous amount of, well, not super enormous but like it's a really big like amount of text and it spans all the way over there you can see modified javascript code and some css and other stuff and now for comparison essentially uh i'm gonna scale this down for comparison the uh dy so essentially anything that's like within a panel like for example this or the inspectors or or these displays or logix nodes or even like your friends list and uh, inventory and other parts of the UI, they're still using the old system. That's gonna be replaced very soon. But because they're still using the old system, we can actually make a comparison. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull out, and I'm gonna create a display node. And I'm gonna display the same text using this display. So, uh, essentially, it's going to be generated by the Unity form system. So, watch carefully. I'm going to plug it in. And we like, and now we are done. So, essentially, you see, it's it's a purpose like significantly more like to generate to generate like the same amount of text. It's also like fully synchronous. So essentially, it froze Neos until it was done doing its work. And the Unity system, it also has a little of um, behaviors. For example, when I grab this. Is actually causing small amount of lag as well, so that's something that's going to be fixed uh, pretty pretty soon. Uh, and then and essentially the UI itself, including inspectors, will use this new system as well and have a significant significantly improved performance. There's one more text, uh, one more example I want to show you. I'm gonna instead of Google, I'm gonna do Reddit because that has even way 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 more way 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 more like text on the web page so this is a even like better text so i'm gonna click pulse and now it's being generated there we go and now it generated this ginormous amount this ridiculously ginormous amount of text it's essentially the reddit web page the raw code so it stretches all the way over there. So, and it's essentially so this is um, this was all generated like while it was processing all of this. Neos was still running; it was still generating frames. So it wasn't it wasn't like a, uh, it wasn't causing everything to freeze. And now, just before I end the video, uh, I'm gonna end it. Uh, 
in a very different way because um, I want to show you something. But uh, I would like to say like thank you very much uh, for watching this, for watching this update, and thank you very much like uh, for your support and supporting me and our team and essentially Neos as a whole. Uh, and like just for being like a really really great community like one one thing i'm most proud of is um having like so many nice people and so many supportive people in our community building like lots of like amazing stuff and helping push this whole project uh, forwards so thank you very much and if you'd like to see more join our discord you can join our, join our patreon uh, feel free to ask us any questions so uh thank you again and now I'm gonna show you with this amount of text. I'm gonna show you a comparison. I'm gonna plug this into the text, and this will. Last time I tried this, this essentially froze Neos for several seconds. But just to give you the comparison of the old font system, let's do this. Yep, and I'm frozen. And still frozen. And let's see essentially if, if it'll take. A while or if it'll ever finish. Last time I waited for several minutes but it never finished. So I'm pretty much essentially will end the video at this point. But this is essentially what, what you have to look uh, look forward to next is having having a much more performant system. Uh, currently it's replacing it replaced the standalone text rendering with the new UI. It's still using the old system, which is what's causing everything to freeze right now. But essentially, that's what I'm going to be working on next. Is I'm going to I'm going to be replacing this new this uh, UI system, and essentially it's going to have the same performance characteristics of the new one. So that's kind of going to end the video here. So thank you very much for watching, and uh, see you next time. Bye, guys.